There are a variety of ways that you can set up a reptile enclosure, and I certainly have my own style, and I feel like I attract an audience to my channel that has a very similar style, so we all like to give each other feedback. I love hearing feedback from you on my enclosures, and you all seem to really enjoy hearing feedback from me about your enclosures. So in today's video, I'm going to be looking at some enclosures that my viewers have submitted to me and giving some feedback, reactions, and just kind of sharing my thoughts on your enclosures. Hey everyone, welcome to or back to the channel. My name is Hunter Hauk, and I'm super excited to react to some of your enclosures in today's video. There are five that I picked out that I'm hoping to get through if time allows, but real quick before we dive into those, I just wanna say if you have a cool enclosure that you want me to show on my channel, head to the link that's on the screen right now and the link in the description, and it takes about two minutes to submit an enclosure to be in my video. Okay, let's dive into some of these awesome enclosures. I normally don't even open the emails at all to see what they are, but today I did look so that I could see what species people submitted so that we're not doing like 30 leopard geckos today. So I picked out five of different species that I think will be interesting, but I haven't actually looked at the enclosures. So these are my true reactions. So this first submission is from Rob and it's a leopard gecko. But the cool thing about this leopard gecko is that this is a 17 year old leopard gecko, which is pretty cool. You don't see that too often. Most leopard geckos in the hobby are still pretty young, or at least that I tend to see. Rob got him when he was two years old and he was pretty malnourished at the time. So I'm excited to see what he looks like now. And I hope that Rob has been able in the last 15 years to get him better. I'm sure he has. So the enclosure information a 46 by 18 by 18 inch enclosure. There's a, it's a bioactive enclosure with a small colony of isopods. It has a jade plant and an aloe vera. T5 5.0 Reptosun UVB bulb and Jungle Dawn LED for plants and a halogen heat bulb. So far, I am really excited for this one. In the additional information section, it says that Zeke had to go into a 36 by 18 by 18 because his larger enclosure broke while Rob was moving. He was happy to find this enclosure on sale and got to work on making a custom background for it. These pics were taken right after the initial setup, so ignore any cold temperature readings you may see on the temperature or humidity gauges. And here's an old clip from Rob's Instagram, at Reptorob, that's a fun pun, of him munching on a scorpion, the vacuum packed feeder. Okay, first, yeah, let's look at the Instagram video clip first, because that could be really interesting. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's a free, or not, I don't know if it's freeze dried or what, but it is vacuum sealed. And there is a company that makes these. In the wild, leopard geckos eat a lot of scorpions and other invertebrates that we wouldn't typically think of as feeder insects. So it's super cool when we see them being fed a variety of animals or prey species in captivity. This is super interesting. And Zeke is a super cute leopard gecko too. Wow. Okay, there's that video. That's pretty cool. And Rob says, keep up the good work, Hunter. We don't have nearly enough good reptile channels out there. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. All right, this first photo is of the enclosure itself. And I really like this. I like how it's a big enclosure, but you can also see that there are plenty of places to hide and get away from the open space. A lot of people have open enclosures without any hiding spots and stuff and then are confused when their leopard gecko or other animal is always hiding but this has a lot of good cover so i'm sure that zeke uses all of the space which is of course a pro you can see the uvb on top and the heat so that's really cool and it looks like there's a hide where he can go to actually climb on top to bask which is always cool here he is, you can see his little tail in this photo. This is cool. Yeah, you can see there's lots of cool plants, a really nice background, I'm really liking this. So far I don't have any <laughs> um, constructive feedback because I just really like this enclosure. Hmm. 
And then here's a big close-up picture of Zeke. You can see this looks like one of those, I think it's Zilla that makes this cave. I'm not 100% sure though, but people seem to really like them. I need to try one of them out. Here he is again. And then here's another place in the enclosure you can see. Yeah, I really like this. There's lots of climbing opportunities on the background as well, but also hiding opportunities that are kind of built in. I'm super curious to know like, I don't know, if you need to get him out to weigh him or something, how you go about that. That's the only thing that would make me nervous about having built-in hides, but it's definitely something that I would explore in the future. Overall, this is a really cool enclosure and I really like it. You did a great job, Rob. I'm trying to think if I have any feedback for you. I would be super interested to see if you were able to add like something to climb on the sides. I know there's the ventilation on the sides, but it would be cool if you were able to make like some climbing fixture on the sides, just to add a little extra enrichment. Not that this enclosure needs any, I'm just trying to think of something so that you get something out of submitting your enclosure, but overall, this is a really nice enclosure and I really like it. I wouldn't change much and I always talk about how this summer I'm gonna redo my leopard gecko enclosures and I'm gonna be pulling bits and pieces from enclosures that you guys have submitted for my enclosures, so thank you for that. This next one is actually an update from a previous enclosure. For those of you who watched the last video, you'll remember Addy submitted a tiny little baby Pac-Man frogs enclosure, or a Pacific horned Pac-Man frogs enclosure. Um, here are the photos, if just to jog your memory. And I said that it had been several months since she actually submitted the enclosure when I reacted to it, so I would love to see an update. Well, Addy came through with an update and yeah, this is really cool. Let's see. So now he's in a 10 gallon because he's gotten bigger. It's a 12 by 12 by 10 inch enclosure. Still fake plants because the plant stores near Addy are closed and she wants to do a bioactive soon, which is super cool. And then she just said, thank you for these suggestions. And she's gonna consider switching to overhead heating, which will be cool and to keep up the great work. Thank you, Addy, and thank you for submitting these updates. This is cool. Okay, yeah, I really like this. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any feedback. I would consider a bigger water dish, although I'm bad at like judging the size of the animal from pictures. So if this is enough for him to fully soak, then that's awesome. Here he is himself. Oh, he's still pretty small. Okay, yeah, I think that water dish is probably good then. This, I'm just quickly showing you guys so that you all can see the update too, but thank you so much, Addy, for submitting that. This next one is from Josh, and it is a Maclots Python enclosure from Josh in the UK, so that's super cool. He said that he really enjoyed my enclosure review video and wanted to submit one of his own. So this is Yennefer the Maclots Python. Here's a picture of her. Oh, these are such cool animals. What is their scientific name? Liasis maculati. Cool. I probably butchered the pronunciation, but it's fine. She's nine months old and just hit three feet and is an absolute joy to keep. She's in a four by three by two and a half foot semi-arboreal semi pseudo-naturalistic enclosure currently. Once she's five to six feet, she'll get an upgrade. She has a 150 watt ceramic heat bulb over a slate basking shelf and also has UVB for basking. Her heat gradient runs diagonally from the top left to bottom right. I'm trying to remember which way it'll be when it's mirrored. <laughs> she has a naturalistic, oh, it says a natural-ish <laughs> looking background, which she has worn some of away because she tries to climb everything with a log hide integrated behind her climbing branch as she will hide, oh, as well as a hide in her rock feature on the right. Substrate is half cypress mulch for ease of humidity control and half fake lawn, which will be clean and hoovered and vacuumed as she loves slithering through grass. All plants are fake, which is useful as maclaw pythons being such an active snake, real ones would be quickly destroyed. That's definitely understandable. It's not perfect, but it's my first attempt at a natural looking enclosure build. After seeing her thrive in there for several months, I think she's relatively happy in it. I hope you like it and her. Love the channel. Many thanks, Josh. Thank you for submitting this, Josh. I'm Yeah, I'm really excited to look. So this is a Maclots Python for anyone who's unaware. So Maclots Pythons are native to Indonesia and Papua New Guinea, 
and frankly, I don't know much about them. So I want to go onto our favorite website for this. We're gonna go to iNaturalist, my favorite website, to try to find some pictures of them in the wild so we can give any suggestions based off of that. So, Leah, mm, I can't remember what their scientific name is. Lee, Asis, Maclotty, there we go. Okay, so yeah, you can see here, oh, there's only a few observations of them, interesting. But here's one on someone's like porch or deck it looks like so I mean I think that you should completely throw away that enclosure and just let it live on your porch totally kidding um <laughs> let's try to find one in the wild here is one okay actually not on someone's porch but out in the wild okay so it looks like they like kind of a gravelly oh this one's nesting interesting okay but yeah it looks like it was in a neighborhood and it's like in some gravel or something is where it's nesting. So that's really interesting. That's not what I was expecting by any means. Here is one kind of out in nature, it looks like, yeah. Okay, so it looks like they kind of tend to be spotted in more moist environments. Sorry for everyone else who hates that word. But yeah, so there's not a ton of observations on iNaturalist for us to judge by and Full disclosure, I don't know a ton about MacGlots pythons and I would love to learn more, so I'm just gonna go based on the limited knowledge that I have and try to give some helpful suggestions based on that. Okay, here is the first photo. Oh wow, I really like this. This is a big enclosure, that's super cool. So it looks like, okay, I do have a suggestion. First of all, it looks like you're using a ceramic heat emitter as the primary heat source. It does look like that's what that is right there. And that's typically not recommended because that, it puts out more UV, not UVC, thank goodness not UVC. That's not typically recommended because it puts out more infrared C, whereas the heat that is needed to penetrate deep into the reptile's body is more infrared A and some B as I understand it, so I would consider switching to something like a halogen and maybe get a dimming thermostat or a dimmer so that you don't get too warm. I'm not sure what their heating requirements are. And then I would switch this analog hygrometer that you see here to something digital because these analog ones, some like you could just drop it from like a foot and then boom, they're all out of whack. So it seems like they aren't super accurate a lot of the times. Oh, cool, okay. This is super interesting. So they, yeah, they seem to be arboreal or semi-arboreal. And some snakes like this, when they eat, they tend to grab their prey and then kind of wrap around them upside down and use gravity to help them eat, which is super fascinating. I think that's a really cool behavior that we see. And so it's super cool that you're giving this snake the opportunity to replicate that behavior in captivity. So A plus on that, good job. And then here's another picture of the snake I'm not sure what it's doing. Snakes are so funny, their behaviors sometimes, I have no idea what they're doing, but it's just adorable. And then here she is, I think you said it's a female, I'm not sure, climbing. I really like how many climbing opportunities you have provided. And then yeah, here she is on your hand. Really pretty snake. I, now after this, I wanna go learn more and read more about them because who knows, maybe that will be a species I keep in the future. So I'm gonna go back to this main picture so that I can see a broad overview of the enclosure. Right here, yeah, those two heating things are my main suggestions. I would be interested to see what would happen if you added like a, a big piece of manzanita wood or something in the center with some branches going off, kind of like a tree and maybe wrapped. I know you're using fake plants, so maybe like a Fluker's Reptivines Pothos around to kind of mimic a tree. See what behaviors come out of that. That would be really interesting for sure. But otherwise, I really like how there's a lot of open space for her to use, but also you have lots of climbing opportunities and you can see she's expressing natural behaviors, especially when she's eating. So that's really cool. Overall, I really like this enclosure as well. So thank you so much for submitting it. Okay, this one is from Kane, I believe. Kane says, my partner and I are amateur frog keepers. 
We have several species and are working on another similar enclosure for more tree frogs. Looking for any tips before we get into our second tree frog enclosure. So these are three red-eyed tree frogs. Their ages are unknown, but they're probably one to two years old. Their names are Remy, Ramona, and Rafiki. That's cool. The enclosure is a 100 gallon or 36 by 18 by 36 exoterra. And of course some of that space is taken up by the background, but I feel like that's definitely a good use of some of that space anyway. The, um, the substrate is Josh's Frog's terra firma. The Josh's Frog's terra firma? The Biodude sells terra firma. Yeah, that's what I thought. The Biodude sells terra firma, so anyways. <laughs> Zoomed Reptasun LED. Okay. No heating outside the UVB bulb on the Reptasun. Oh, it's a Reptasun LED UVB? Okay, interesting. I am not a big fan of those. Personally, just some of the things that I've read, I wouldn't be comfortable using an LED UVB yet, at least not a Zoomed one. Miss King, there are two mist nozzles. A water dish for soaking at the ground level, okay. And then it's fully bioactive, several species of isopods and tons of springtails, that's exciting. Heavily planted with a large variety of leafed plants for the frogs to sleep on, cool. Regularly feed crickets and dubia roaches, those are good. Used pond safe construction foam with a cocoa fiber substrate pressed into it to provide the appropriate texture. Okay, so there's three photos here. First of all, this is a really big enclosure and I think that's really cool. And so of course I'm not able to see a ton cause it's, I don't know, the photo, it seems like Gmail decided to compress it because technology. But I really like how you have such a large variety of plants. It seems like no matter what the frogs are looking for, they'll be able to find something, whether it's one of these vines up here or something with a bigger leaf like down here that they can sit on. I really like this, and I think that background looks really cool. I see the Miss King nozzles. That's cool that they're facing opposite directions, so you can kind of get the whole tank misted down. Yeah, so far, I would just say... I am not super familiar with the Zoomed's UV LED. I have seen it in person a couple of times and I have heard mixed reviews of it. So for something as sensitive as red-eyed tree frogs, my main suggestion so far would be to switch them to something that there's a little bit more information available about. Here are two of the red-eyed tree frogs, maybe three. I can't tell if that one is just one or if there's two right there but they are super cool. I think they're definitely an underrated species. Yeah, I think that these are super cool, a super cool species. And then here's the third photo. It seems to just be another photo of the enclosure. But yeah, I really like this. I like how it's big. There's lots of opportunities for them to climb around, to jump, to hide, to express all of those natural behaviors that they would be expressing in the wild. I'm not sure if that is a, an analog hygrometer that I'm seeing right there, but if so, my only suggestion, or my only other suggestion would be to switch to something digital because, again, the analog ones typically fall out of calibration pretty easily, so they're not always the most accurate. Otherwise, I really like this enclosure. I really like all the plants. I would love to know what some of those species of plants are. If anyone in the comments or the person who submitted this enclosure knows, definitely leave a comment. I know that that's like a Monstera and these are some pothos, but that's about all I recognize. Thank you so much, Kane, for submitting that enclosure. I know you were hoping for some feedback before you got another enclosure set up for some more frogs, so I really hope you find some of my insights valuable and I'm really excited to see your next enclosure. So definitely submit it once it's set up. That would be super cool to see. Moving on to our final enclosure for today's video. This one is from Lewis. It's a plains hognose snake, nine months old right now, eating well, and she's burrowed a lot. This time of year, you'll definitely have your plains hognose burrowed a lot. <laughs> Here's a picture of mine from the other day when I had to dig her up to weigh her. She was not happy about it, but yeah. It's a 90 by 45 by 45 centimeter exoterra. 
I need to do some conversions because I have an American brain and I don't know what that is in imperial <laughs> units. So that's 35 by 18 by 18 inches or 50 gallons for those. Oh, so it's probably like a 40 gallon breeder. For those of you who didn't know, 40 gallon breeders are in fact way larger than 40 gallons. <laughs> So for the substrate, it's an Arcadia Arid Earth Mix with some sphagnum moss and leaf litter. It's bioactive, it has springtails, isopods, and darkling beetles. So for those of you who don't know, darkling beetles are the adult form of mealworms, and a lot of people have started using them as a cleanup crew, and I'm yeah, I think that's pretty cool. I would love to try that out sometime. The plants are all real as well. For lighting, this person uses two jungle dawns, which those tend to be considered the best of the best lighting for reptiles, so that's pretty cool. Or lighting for plants in reptile enclosures. For heating, I use a DP projector connected to a dimming thermostat. I miss the enclosure about once a week. The stones you see are stacked from the bottom of the enclosure, so that's good. If they're stacked on the bottom of the enclosure, when the hog nose burrows under them, they're not going to shift. Okay, so these, enclo or these photos are kind of small, but you can see here is the hog nose. I really like how you have stacked rocks, first of all, because that way they can kind of have tiered basking and can decide the temperature where they want to be. That's cool. Here, okay, this is kind of a strange angle, but it seems like you're shooting from one side to the other. I really like this. Um, I would say maybe add some stuff in the middle. That would be my suggestion so far. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So I can see where the basking surface is. Yeah, I would add some more climbing opportunities for sure because your hog nose at this size is gonna be able to climb that background maybe, but I would maybe switch out the background for something with more surfaces that are able to be climbed or add something in the center for climbing as well so that your hog nose can exhibit that behavior because at least my hog nose really likes to climb. Whenever she's not underground, she's usually climbing up some branches in her enclosure. And then, yeah, there's that. And then I need to download the video clip so we can watch it. All right. Okay, so it's kind of just a brief overview of the enclosure. Cool. Yeah, I really like this. My only suggestion would be to add some more enrichment items and maybe a background. Oh, okay, I completely forgot. You aren't using UVB for this enclosure, and a lot of hog noses definitely benefit from it, so I would consider adding an Arcadia Shade Dweller. I know for the Exoterra 40 gallon breeder size enclosure with a hog nose, that would be just about perfect. That's what I have for my hog nose that's in this exact same enclosure, actually, and she seems to really benefit from that and does quite a bit of basking, so that would be my other suggestion. Thank you so much, Lewis, for submitting this enclosure. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Maybe you saw an enclosure that you really liked. I really like that Maclots Python enclosure, for one. Um, and I think I can find ways to integrate some pieces that I really liked out of that into my enclosures. So hopefully you'll see something that you really found to be cool that you can integrate into your enclosures as well. Be sure to leave a comment down below with your constructive feedback for these people and definitely let me know what you learned from their enclosures and if there's any pieces of that that you're going to integrate into your own reptile care, definitely tell me about that. If you want to see your enclosure reviewed by me, I want to do these videos a lot more often since you all seem to really enjoy them, definitely head to the website in the description and there's a button that you press, you can submit your enclosures and it takes about two minutes. Super easy. If you want to support my channel, I would love for you to join me on Patreon. I make some bonus posts and some bonus video clips and all that fun stuff and your support really helps me make videos just like this one. You can also head to shop.hunterhawk.com for some cool reptile merch. We have shirts and clothing and mugs and stuff with this design and a couple of other really cool designs. If you want to see more of my videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I make lots of awesome videos about reptiles and amphibians and I would love for you to join me. 
Once again, my name is Hunter Hauk. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.